So Nomad 1.53 is out and there's a few tweaks in there and a couple that I like are the interactive widgets. So we've always been able to edit our primitives by going into the slider in the panel where you actually call your uh, primitives from. But now you can actually scale and resize and do lots of little tweaks in the viewport window. So let's take a look at interactive widgets. Okay, so let's talk about the interactive widgets. So if you come up to your scene menu and you see your list of primitives that we're quite used to seeing, if you were to open up box as a start, uh, I've got wireframe on there, I'll turn it off for a moment, and I've also got a, a bright orange matte cap, and I've also got a uh, an outline on. So if you come up here, up to the um, display settings, and you can see I've got outline on there. I always quite like that because when I get multiple objects, it's quite nice to be able to see it. So what used to happen is if I had the box here and I then come over to topology, I've got all of the parameters to change it. So I can change the, the box, the, the um, subdivisions. I can change the, the size. I can change the, um, the overall topology, bring it right down. Uh, make it constant there or turn that off and I can make the divisions by sides. So they're quite, you know, quite normal. We've been doing that for quite a few versions. But what we've got now are these interactive widgets in the scene. So rather than just doing everything in that panel, if you're using primitives a lot, and I, I do use primitives a lot to start my sculpting, I quite often sculpt whole scenes with just using primitives and then voxel merge them together. Having these um, uh, extra widgets in the controls in the, the per tool on the gizmo is quite useful. You know, we've still got the controls that we used to have. So if you pull the, the large, um, this red dot here and this blue dot here, you can see it on this side. You can still do the scaling uh, in the same way as proportional. But having these extra widgets just gives you a little bit more I suppose it's speed more than anything else because you can do it in this panel. Um, but having the ability just to do it, you know, there and then in the scene is actually quite nice. And not, not everyone's got it. Not every uh, primitive have got it. So if you look at Sphere, for example, I'll just turn wireframe off for a second. If you look at Sphere, uh, that hasn't got it. So that's, that's one that's still got just its old controls. So we'll just put that over to the side. Again, same as the same as the the cube out of the way, and then we go back and we have a look at cylinder. This is probably one of my favourite ones. I, lo I love messing with this, and I'll just put that wireframe back on here at the bottom just to show you. So you've got your same controls as you always had, so you can bring your subdivision right down, so it's all the way down to just a, a, a triangle, an extruded triangle. Or you can bring it back up and go quite high res, and you can get that nice high res look so that's that's the same but in the scene now you've got all your scaling options and you can have you know top and bottom different sizes you can have your height all done in the scene it just gives it a little bit more control in scene as you get faster and as you start you know doing these kind of things you know as i mean i'm using this professionally now quite a lot so anything that speeds me up is better and obviously you can do center hole a cylinder hole here as well and that that that'll change with these which is your radius start and end but then you can do that out here as well you can see it changing over here on the left as i as i move these around you you, you know you can see that that the, the the radius start changing and then move that up and then i assume if i do this one the radius end will change as well which it does so again it's just it just makes things a little bit more um you know a little bit more useful and it's a little bit more um uh, i suppose it just makes things a bit more flexible now remember what i said it's not on everyone so you do have it on taurus so you've got the same controls on there i'll just keep loading them in and show you which ones you do and don't have so you can bring it up and down and affect it as as you as, as you would normally expect with the taurus um, and you've got the um, well, the next two don't have it, but plane does. 
and then that's it there they're all the ones inside the the primitive menu that do actually have that control so again as i said last you know at the start of this that you've still got your old controls nothing's gone now it's just the ability to add more so they're all pretty cool it's you know it's a nice little feature it's not it's not a huge update um for those but that 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 is quite useful as it stands but then if you add those controls to tube so come up to your brushes and you've got tube so we could do either curve or path so i'll do curve and as you can see now we've got curve with a tube i'll turn that wireframe off oops double double clicked it then um, and now with this tube, you've got this, you're have got going to see in a moment, you've got the same controls. So we've got the ability to move these around. And don't forget with tube, you can tap to make those hard edged. So that would be if you're going to start doing piping, you can do it that way. Uh, there doesn't seem to be a very, you know, a smooth corner there. So don't forget, you can still come in here, pin it open and you can mess with your um, subdivisions in here. So, you know, you there's lots of there's lots of settings that you still get in in inside this menu so let me just slick them back to being rounded just tapping them and then if we do this bit here come to the end you can see the widget control here as well so you can increase the size right there in in the scene and again that's been there there for for a while so it's not it's, you know, it's it, this has been out for a little bit longer than than you would imagine, but if you hadn't seen it, then this is this is this is obviously a really useful um, addition to your tool set. So um, come up to um, let's see tool geometry, tool topology. Let's put the hole in it, the same as we did with the cylinder. So we've got the ability to let's move these around so you can see them. You've got that a nice tube look, so that that again is 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 really really useful, and you've also got the ability if you come up to the top, and you change the um, so you come up come to the bottom and tube hole, turn that off for a moment, and then what we want to do is we want to change the same radius, turn it off. So you're basically changing or clicking off that button, and now you've got the ability to make it bigger and smaller as needed. Now. Just, let me just do the same at this other end. Let's bring this down, bring it really tight. So I use this all the time for, um, I use it for tentacles, I use it for, um, I, well, I use it for all kinds of stuff, really. It's, you know, I use it for pipe work, I use it for armour, I use it on, um, let's just change the radius at the start, like so. I use it for hair. I've used it for, um, as I say, tentacles. So, so th 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 there's lots of reasons why you might you might want to use this. And having the widget like that, it just makes it a little bit uh, more user friendly. Now, if you want to do that and then um, come up here, and you can either you can close it, which I wouldn't want to do here. You can do it manually. Now, manually is where you see a lot of control of the new controls because now you've got an individual control f on every single joint there, on every single you know control vertice, as we would call it in other programs. So you really can go to town. And you can actually make full creatures um, just by using this. So what we'll do is we'll just do a little bit of a time lapse and I'll just make a creature uh, just out of using the, you know these control widgets on a tube, um, which makes it a really useful you know thing all on its own. You, you know it, it's useful in lots of ways, but to be able to make a creature with it just makes it even more fun. So the base of the dragons just the the tube drawn along um, a, a line for the body and then one for the front legs and one for the the back legs. I, when I was doing this test, I decided I just made one leg and then one side validated it and got it in the right place on one side. Then I just mirrored it across. So it just made more sense than trying to fight it with the uh, with the mirroring um, during the, the, the creation of the tube. So I did the same. So body was the same, arms, legs, did a curly tail. Um, I, I did the horns, I did the ears, and then just went straight into sculpting. So before I did that, I just merged them all together and voxel remeshed them, as I would do when I'm doing any of the primitive kind of workflows that, that, that I do. And then w went in pretty much with just a few brushes, the usual uh, suspects for me. So the clay brush, 
use the um, crease brush um, and then a tiny little bit of flatten and then a lot of it is just the move and back to the clay brush and that generally does most of what I need um, and as you can see there I mean that that is a time ramp obviously but um, to get the primary form down is is just a few minutes of of putting the shapes together now as I've said many times that you know you can you can do this kind of work with just putting the primitives together but if you use something like these interactive widgets on the tube you can get your volumes correct at the point that you're doing the the initial um, block out um, which just speeds you up a little bit really and and because you've got that ability to uh, move the spline around and, and increase the size with if you, if you set the manual on it's 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 just a nice experience really so and then the rest of it really is just the normal process that I've been teaching for for, for, for quite a long time it's just using stamps um, just affecting the surface. I've obviously put a metal on there, so I've just used the new, newish post-processing features and put things like, um, you know, a couple of extra lights. Um, now I didn't go in. I was going to make uh, feet and claws with um, more tubes, but it just didn't seem like it needed it really. So I just took the existing tube um, and just, you know cut off one toe, toe, duplicated it, merged it back in, you know, voxel merged it in and, and, and away we go. But that, that's a great example where you could use the tube. You could easily get the, you know, get the each toe could be a tube. Um, but it, it, it wasn't any great shakes just to do it th that way. Um, then a little bit of breaking the symmetry um, and then a, a few more messing, uh, you know, a few more goes in, um, the, the post-processing uh, section and just adding things like an extra light and adding things like uh, depth of field all the fun stuff really that comes at the end but uh, but really quite a, a quite an interesting way to make you know big shapes very very quickly so have a go of, of, of all of the primitives um, and some of the brushes that have, that have got these uh, interactive widgets and you'll find that you know that there's quite a bit of flexibility in there to make some crazy shapes um, and just have some fun with Nomad, as as we always say. So, Nomad's growing at such an incredible pace. Uh, Stefan, the developer, puts out um, releases faster than, than most of us can keep up. So, I hope you're enjoying what he's, you know, the fruits of his labour, really. So, and if you're enjoying our channel, we obviously cover Nomad a lot at the moment. If you fancy giving us a thumbs up, that does help us to get in front of other artists in the future. And of course, it would help us if you'd like to subscribe to the channel. So if you can, hit the subscribe button down below and hit the notification bell.